Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different, which is looking at how you can use AGDX editing tools without actually writing in an AGDX game. Um, just recently, as some of you will, I'm sure, know, I uh, put out a release of uh, Bruce Lee RX, which was an, an extensive edit of the original game. And I actually used the tools that I developed for AGDX on that and um, I was able to adapt the data from Bruce Lee in such a way that I could bring it into um, into AGDX, use the tools and then export it again. Because AGDX supports a lot of import and export, providing you with a lot of uh, data, you know, like as you can see here about uh, where everything is stored and how to access it, that does allow you to import and export data and uh, make use of the tools and since the tools have kind of grown and developed over a period of time and are quite extensive now. Um, I personally have found them very useful when it comes to developing and I think it's quite likely that, that I'll be using some of these tools to develop games that don't actually run on the uh, AGD or ADDX engine. So it struck me that uh, perhaps other people might be interested in that as well. So I thought I'd show you uh, for those of you that don't use AGD but might be interested in some development tools that could be handy, as, especially if you like working on the original machine, then um, here's a look at some of those. So first of all, uh, we have a font editor, which uh, I'll show you now. As you can see here, it's a pretty standard basic font editor, but it does uh, it does the job. You can load in. 768 byte binary file into the address here 31232 you can browse the font here and there's a basic editor here that you can use to edit the font you can also press F to view the original so you can use it for user-defined graphics and uh, various bits and pieces like that and uh, yeah so that's basically a font editor it's uh, not the best font editor in the world, but it's useful enough and does the job. Okay, so secondly, there is a block editor. Uh, this is for editing tiles. And again, uh, obviously a lot of Spectrum games use tiles. And um, this one supports up to 254 tiles. The last tile, the uh, tile 255 or the number 255 is used by um, AGD for its compression system. So the last couple of tiles are missing here, but you can see the full set. This is for Bruce Lee, as you can see, the Bruce Lee RX, and uh, that's all the tiles that are used in the game. And uh, you can save that as a screenshot. What I tend to do is work between um, AGD and uh, ZX Paintbrush, so I can basically import and export to and from those two things. Um, ZX Paintbrush is really useful for editing larger tiles, for example, this kind of big demon here. Whereas um, when you want to do specific details and you want some additional tools when you're working in, a, in that small space, then that's where um, this editor comes in handy because it does have options on here, various options that allow you to quickly change the ink and the paper. And you can also... Um, use uh, inverse for the pixels, inverse for the ink and the paper. You can rotate, you can flip it vertically, you can flip it horizontally, you can shift it to the uh, le right and to the left like that and uh, you can also shift it down, shift it up and so on. So basically it's a pretty extensive editor for uh, building tiles and of course You've got the data address here. The tile, the pixel data, and the attribute data are stored separately. And this uh, this address here tells you the block that you're currently looking at, or the tile that you're looking at, where it begins here. So you can save that off pixel data here, and uh, then you can save the attribute data off there as well. And then you can uh, basically add those files as binaries to your assembly code and reference them. And uh, basically, there you go. You'll have access to the to the data, and you can your own your own uh, games can can make use of them. 
All right, so let's then now look at the screen editor. Now, the screen editor perhaps is a little more specific to AGDX, but nevertheless, I found it quite useful. So the window option here lets you define the window that you're working with. With Bruce Lee, it's 32 by 22. And if you look here, you'll see that I've got uh, various screens, well, all of the screens from Bruce Lee, which I was able to import. So I decompressed them and then I imported them into uh, AGDX. So um, AGDX, while you're in the editor, while you're in the screen editor, it uses a buffer at 64768, so right at the top of memory, 768 bytes. Uh, and if you're using a full screen like this one, 32 uh, width, then you would have no problem in importing the data into this and uh, then being able to edit it. So, you know, it would work with uh, quite a few games, I think, that use full width. And there are ways that you can edit it to, to use uh, a different size as well. Obviously, you can change it in the, in the window and that will work, but uh, slightly trickier would be exporting the data out again because AGD has its own uh, compression system. But if you wanted to, you could uh, design rooms in this um, format and you could export the, um, the data here, the number of screens and everything. You could export that data and use it in your own games as well. It uses a very simple RLE compression system, uh, run length encoding. So basically it uh, uncompressed data is just given in bytes and then if it has uh, uh, bytes which are repeating it uses code 255 followed by the uh, the number the number of blocks or the number of tiles and then the tile number I think that's the right order but I might have to double check that but uh, yeah so if you wanted to again you could use the screen editor it is quite uh, quite extensive there's a lot of tools here it's got options for uh, copy and paste and uh, using larger sections of the screen um, just to give you an idea, I mean, I can copy here, I can copy 4x4 four four like this and paste it like that, like a bigger tile. Um, and I can undo that as well. And um, yeah, there's, qu oh, well, there's quite a lot of options. You can grab and remove stuff and change it around and basically just edit as you might wish. It even has the support for Kempston Mouse, in fact, as well. So might be useful who knows so let's move over and now have a look at the sprite editor now again obviously it is designed initially to use with um, AGDX but you can use it to design your own sprites um, within games because it has the option to export them so here you can see I've got uh, a couple of uh, basic sprites here. I've got this kind of uh, Gallagher sprite here with the um, ship and the uh, alien which can be rotated like that. And um, within the sprite editor it's 16 by 16. You can also do 16 by 24. And uh, yeah, you can basically edit it as you might expect. And again, there's a lot of options. Uh, rotate, shift, inverse, um, and so on. As you can see here, there's quite a lot of them are documented here. But perhaps um, if you're going to use this to edit sprites and then export them, the most useful thing is probably the um, worksheet here. So uh, to do that, I can go to here, press S, and uh, it will basically show me all of the sprites that I'm working on. And this can be saved off as a uh, screenshot so that you can then export it into your own games if you wish to. Incidentally, the sprite data for AGD and AGDX is stored as 128 bytes, and essentially what that is is you'll have one sprite like that, that's 32 bytes. You'll then have it shifted over like uh, this. That will be the second image, that will be the third image, and that would be the fourth image and that's obviously used to uh, allow the sprites to move quickly it's basically pre-shifting 
So if you did want to use uh, pre-shifted sprites in that format, again, you can easily save them off from the address given here. This single image as a 32 byte uh, image can be saved off from this address. And if you want to have four pre-shifted images, then you can do the same thing and 128 bytes. And as you'll notice here, if I go to the next frame, you'll see that that is basically 128 bytes ahead of that one. So in order to save off all of those, you would need to save 128 times uh, eight, which is uh, 1K. So you could basically save that off in that way if you wanted. Uh, these sprites obviously do take up quite a lot of memory and uh, that's one of the reasons AGX is quite fast and smooth, but it, uh, it isn't necessarily the most efficient method. So uh, as I said, if you prefer, you can store it, you can export it as a sprite sheet and then you can edit it. And again, as I said, I usually go back and forth between Zenit's paintbrush and this to, uh, to kind of make a small adjustments and test it. And of course, if you want to, you can also use um, uh, the scripting to uh, just move the sprites around and see how they look on screen and everything else, and then um, move, move them out into your own code. So uh, yeah, I think those are the main areas that uh, that's, that it's most useful, really. Um, the tools are quite nice, and um, obviously running on the spectrum, you get to see exactly how they look, how they fit, how they move, and um, and so on. So as I said, I've been finding them really useful. It was very, very, very handy. Couldn't have done uh, the Bruce Lee RX without using these tools. And so I thought I would um, put out a bit more information out there for people that might be interested in uh, in trying them out. Maybe not writing an AGDX game. Perhaps you want to write something in uh, pure assembly, but you might find uh, some of these tools useful uh, when it comes to actually creating the images and data. Okay, so that's it for today. Hope you found that useful and uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Might do a video specifically on Bruce Lee and how I achieved that. Uh, but in the meantime, as always, happy coding. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.